Now, seriously, do you know what love is? Have you actually sat down and got the biblical definition of love? Or you just use Google? I know what you do. You sit there, you Google, and you use love as an expression of like. You like this, or you like that, right? Or I feel this way, or you know, I shouldn't go this route because of my feelings. Well, look, dive into the scriptures with me and let's determine and see what biblical love is. All right, y'all, here it is. Let's get it. What is love? What is it? Aren't you tired of not loving or you think you're loving? Let's find out what is love. But in order to find out what is love, the first thing we're going to have to do is determine what it isn't. Because we were taught a lot of things on what love is, but it is actually not that. Okay? So let's break this down. Okay? We're going to go traditional versus biblical when it comes to love. What is love biblically the way God stated it? Because God is love. Okay? So first, let's address what it isn't. Okay? I get a lot of people telling me this is what love is right here. Okay? So we're going to mark this on the traditional side. People say that love is a feeling. A feeling. Oh man, I just feel so good. I love him. I feel good about it, right? A feeling. And if you look on Google, Google give you the definition of what it think love is and that's how you operate love, right? Google says love is an intense feeling of deep affection. That's what Google say love is. A deep feeling of intense affection, right? That is not what biblical love is, okay? That is not what biblical love is. Not at all, okay? Here's another thing where we say love is. Loving myself. Loving myself. You know, you get that all the time. I can't love nobody first unless I first love me. I can't help folks. I can't love her or love him because I first need to love myself. Okay? I have to do that first. Right? So we get that a lot. Loving ourselves. Is that what love is? Is that what the Bible states love is? Are you sure? When you claiming that you got to love yourself first in order for you to love somebody else, you know? Is that what love is? Is that what you're saying? Think about it. This year, it's about me. It's about me this year. Is that you? It's about me. 2022, everything about me. I got to get me together first. So that way I can help somebody else. I can't help nobody else if I don't get me together. I got to love me first. Is that you? <laughs> Loving myself. Feeling. Here's another one right here. Love. Food. Or. I love. This show. Or I love him, her, but I'm not in love with him or her. Is that you? Is that you? I just love pancakes. Really? How can you love a pancake? How can you love a, a pancake? Oh, because Google said an intense feeling of deep affection. So now you can love a TV show or you can love food, a pancake. That's you? Yes, it is. You love food. You love shows. You love him, but I'm not in love with him. I know that's you. You can't even deny that. I love him or I love her, but I'm not in love with them anymore. Mm -mm. I, just, I love them, but I'm not in love. Also, now it's two types of love. Let me write that down. 
I don't know why. I should have. Two types of love. Now you're saying there's two types of love. You all over the place. You don't know what love is. One minute you love them. I love them, but I'm not in love. This my, I love this show. Oh, this, I love this song. Do you really know what love is? You throwing love around like it's like. Maybe you're confusing love with like. Maybe you're confusing love with like. Because you really don't know what love is. So you like food. You like this show, right? You like. There's only one love. And that love is God. So we're going to get to the, the truth in this. We're going to uproot this stuff. Stop telling people that you love them, but yet you don't even know what it is. So let's go biblically. Biblically, what is love? Biblically. Do y'all know? Put in the comments. What is love biblically? Put in the comments if you know. Put it in the comments. I know what love is, biblically. And it ain't none of this stuff. A feeling of deep affection, of deep affection. It's none of that. So I, I don't know where that came from. Google. Stop letting Google tell you everything. That is not what love is. As a Christian, you are a believer of Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who God sent his only son for us. You believer in him. That is not what Christian love is. It is not loving yourself. It is not uh, two types of love. I love him or her, but I'm not in love with them. That is not biblical love. So get up out of it. My brothers and my sisters, I'm talking to you. Christian love, what is biblical love? Okay, let's jump in. Christians are supposed to be known for their love. If they're supposed to be known for their, for their love because Jesus said in Mark 12 and 30, let's go to it. Mark 12 and 30, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. That's what Jesus said. So, to love biblically, you got to love God. You have to love God. How do you love God? All your mind. All your soul. Heart. Right? Mind and body. You got to love God that way. All your mind, all your heart, all your soul, all your body. That's, that's, that's the first thing. You got to do this first. Then, after you do this, you have to, watch this. What it says? You have to love your neighbor as yourself. Now notice, he didn't say Love your neighbor as you love yourself. He didn't say that. Jesus didn't command you to love your, love your neighbor as you would love yourself. That's not what he said. Because if you do that, then he's telling you first to love yourself first. He didn't say, he didn't say that. So don't add that in there, okay? He's telling you to love your neighbor as yourself, meaning as how you would treat yourself. The way you take care of yourself. You don't want any harm to yourself. You don't want to do anything bad to yourself. You don't want to you know, uh, uh, bring affliction and pain to yourself. No, you want to treat yourself accordingly. He said, the way you want to do that to yourself, do that to your neighbor. <laughs> not do that to yourself first, then do that to your neighbor. No, that's not what he stated. Okay? The Bible, nowhere in the Bible tells you to love yourself. Okay? 
Nowhere. You can't find that in the Bible where it tells you to love yourself. That's the first thing. That's number one. Number two. You got to love God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39. Let's go to it. Because we got to get this down. We got to understand how to love. If you don't understand how to love, you will never know how to love if you got to understand what it is. See, love isn't about you. It's not about you receiving it. It's about you giving it to someone else. Biblical love is for someone else. It's for others. Matthew 22, 37. Let's see. 37 and 39. Here's Jesus again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Y'all see that? Love your neighbor as yourself, okay? And this body means strength, okay? That body means strength. The body means strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not love your neighbor as you would love yourself. That's not what it said. Do not add that in. Do not put information in the Bible that it, that it, that it doesn't say. It doesn't say love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Jesus didn't say that. That's not what he stated. Okay? You got to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So, it's clear it's very clear that the dictionary defines love as an intense affection and warm feeling for another or strong sexual sexual desire. That's what the dictionary of love is in Google. OK, but we're, we're not talking Google. We're talking Bible. OK, biblical truth. OK. I sure hope y'all get this because you will never know how to love if you don't get this. If you don't get this, you will never know how to love. So, how does the scripture define love? How does the scripture define love? It's, the definition is in there. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 16. 1 John 3 and 16. You walk around saying, hey, love me, I love you, you love me, and you love me, all because of the way you feel. The moment he or she do something that you don't like, they go outside the boundaries of your love scope, Bam, you don't love them no more. <laughs> you don't love them no more. Why? Because you don't understand the true definition of biblical love. Okay? Let's go to it. First John. Let's go. First John 3 and 16. This is what it reads. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and will measure and Measure our hearts before him. Okay? This is how we know. This is how we know. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. That's what he did. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Love is an action. Let me read it again. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. <laughs> he laid down his life for us. That's what he did. How do you become to know love? Look what Jesus did. He laid down his life for us. That means he did something for us. There's nothing you did. It's something that he does that he did for us. That's love. He laid it down. Okay? So let's put, let's put that on there. Laid down his life. That's love. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all out. You're not going to get this. If you don't understand what I'm telling you. 
He laid down his life for us. That's an action. Okay? 1 John 3 and 18 says, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth. <laughs> let us not love, come on y'all, don't do this, with your mouth only, with your lips, you know, prayer lips say anything. Love with action and truth. Are you doing that? Are you loving with action and truth? Are you laying down yourself for other people? Or are you just okay, you know, doing these things when the love, they, they inside your love uh, uh, scope of support? <laughs> what about when they get outside of it? Then what? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna continue to love? Because you gotta show action and truth in your love. You gotta do that. If you're not doing that, it isn't love. Sorry, it's not how you feel. <laughs> Cause you can love somebody if you like them or dislike them. Love is greater than like, okay? Love is greater than like. I, I sure hope y'all getting this because y'all ignore a lot of this stuff. Y'all ignore what the demands and commands that Jesus Christ has given us to show us and teach us what love really is. All you do is say, I love to watch this show. Oh, I love that song. Really? You love a song? Can you, can you lay down your life for a song? You how you, you, you sound? Can you... Um, Show action and truth to a song. <laughs> Is that song your neighbor? I'm just asking questions. Since you love that song, you're doing this talk. First John 5 and 3 says, this is love for God. Watch this, because y'all run from this part of the love. To obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome at all. We'll put that right here. Obey his commandments. You got to obey Jesus' commandments. Je Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. We just read what the commandments were. We just read what the commandments were now. Love God. Right here. Bam. You just read it. Love God with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, and with all your strength. Right? I like to say body for strength. Right? You got to do that. And then, what's the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second one, right here. These are the commandments. Now you know what's the commandments. It's not the 10 commandments that was given to Moses, it's this. This boy and this boy. <laughs> Those are commandments. So don't you go running and say, Atlanta told me if I wanna love, I gotta, I gotta follow all 613 laws. No, that's wrong. I didn't say that. He said, if you love me, you obey my commandments. What are the commandments? Love God with your mind, soul, mind, soul, heart, strength. I like to say body, right? And also love your, love your, um, love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the commandment, uh, commandments you must obey. Were you aware of that? Did you know that? Did you even... Try. First John, now listen to this. Let me read this passage. It's in First John chapter 4, 8 through 19. Listen to this. So you can really get a grasp on this love stuff. So that way you can stop acting like love is the way you feel. Oh, I don't feel like doing it. You know how many times you say feel a day? I don't feel like going to the store. 
I don't feel like talking to them. I don't feel like hearing that. I don't feel. Feel, feel, feel. When you gonna start moving out of love? When you gonna start it? Everything about you is how you feel and you cross up feelings, feelings with love. This is not love, the way you feel. I ain't gotta feel right to love you. I'm commanded to love you. Obey his commandments right here. I'm commanded to love you if I'm a Christian. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, you are commanded to love me regardless if I'm in your love, love or support, your scope love support, or outside of your love scope support. Either or, it doesn't matter. You have to love me if you say you love Christ because you got to love God first. And how, how did he express his love to us? By giving us his only son. Okay? Here's the verse, 1 John 4, 8 through 19. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God love was revealed amongst us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that, so that we might live through him. Love consists of this, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he is in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe that love that God has for us. God is love and that and that the one who remains in love remains in God and God remains in him. And this love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. First of all, did y'all hear that? If you scared, this is not love. If you scared, <laughs> that's not love. Sorry. Get it together. The reason why you even know how to love, we just, we just heard it. He first loved us. He first loved us. That's how we even know how to love. Because he first loved us. I can't make this up. Everything about love is involved in Jesus Christ. Everything. It has nothing to do with the way he feels. You think God was felt good to give up his son for your tail and mine for all the stuff we've been doing? You think God sit there and felt good about that? <laughs> you think his feelings weren't involved? No, God moved out of something greater than the way he feel. He moved out of love. Go to John chapter 14 and 21. John chapter 14 and 21. I can't make this up, y'all. Like... This is serious. This Jesus talking. Jesus said this. The one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Y'all hear that? The one who has my commands. Remember, we went over that. Obeying his commands. We just went over that. Jesus said the one that keeps my commands and obey them. What is his commands? Let me do it again. Love God. There you go again. With all your mind, soul, heart, and strength, I like to say body. And love yourself like you love your as you love, I and mean, we love your neighbor as yourself. We got the command down. Watch this. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father. I also will love him and will remain and will remain, reveal myself to him. Then y'all run around like, man, why I ain't never. God don't never talk to me, man. I, I pray to God and I can't get no answers. I, 
I move this way, I do this, I, I pay this, I pay that. I stop doing this, I stop doing that. Why can't I hear from God? I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> because you don't know how to do this. You gotta talk God language, which is love. You don't talk his language. That's why you can't hear from him. He don't reveal nothing to you because you don't move out of love. You move out of like. You a like person. And you're confusing like with love. You're confusing the way you feel with love. That's why he ain't, you ain't been revealed. Christ ain't revealed himself to you because you don't move in love. You can't hear from God unless you go, go through love. He just said, I also will love him and will reveal myself to him. I don't understand it. Y'all something else. God say he going to reveal himself to you. <laughs> but you got to love first. That's why he ain't revealed himself to you. That's why the power of Christ is not operating the way you think it should in your life. Because you not loving. You don't know how to love. Love is not a, a, a feeling of affection. Love is an action. You got to have an action. It got to be action and truth. Action and truth. It has nothing to do with the way you feel. Anytime your feelings get in the way, bam, it, it, it's, it's not love no more. So we're going to get rid of feelings. Let's get rid of that. Too many people in their feelings get out of it and start loving it's the Bible. <laughs> Ooh, y'all mad now. Y'all mad because you finally understand that you ain't been loving. Don't worry, I was with y'all too at one point. You got to show, show your love for God through obedience, okay? When you obey God, you show that you truly love him. You show that you truly love him when you obey God. And how do you obey him? It's simple. Obey his commandments. Here it is again. Love, your, love God with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your strength. I like to say body, right? Then you got to love your neighbor as yourself. You're treating your neighbor the way you want to be treated. Biblical love is sacrificial, meaning that that type of love is not designed for you personally, it's designed for the next person. <laughs> when you start loving yourself, then you start crossing the line. You're not being or demonstrating Christian love. You're demonstrating pride. And the scriptures talk about that in the last days. People will become lovers of themselves. So we don't want that. So you want to love God all the way and obey him with all your heart, right? I know some of y'all say, especially my, my deep Bible, you know, readers. Well, Landon, how are we going to love God with all my heart when the Bible clearly states that our heart is deceitful above all things? You're right. Jeremiah 7, 17 and 9 says that. Right? So that's why you got to ask for a pure heart. You got to ask for it. Ezekiel 18, 31 says, rid yourself of all offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. You're not going to be able to even know how to love until you get a new heart. A new spirit. <laughs> Ooh, man. Why do I know in the comments? Why we need to get a new heart? I already got one. He answered that too. In Jeremiah 24 and 27. Let's go. Jeremiah 24 and 27. I sure hope y'all getting this. Let's, let's get this love thing right. 
Jeremiah. Let's see. Jeremiah 24 and 7. Jeremiah 24 and 7, it reads, I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God because they will return to me with all their heart. God gonna give you a new heart. He gotta give you a new heart because your, your old when you don't understand how your old heart is. Your old heart is doing this. Feeling, loving yourself, you love food, he uh two or three different types of love. Well, oh, here go another one y'all always say right here. Here it is. Love hurts. Or love will get you killed. Really? Love will get you killed? <laughs> no, your mouth. Your mouth will get you killed. Putting yourself in situations, talking yourself up out of here. That's what gets you killed. Not love. Seriously? Oh, I love hard. And every time I love hard, it come and bite me. Nah, you don't love hard. You like hard. And you get bit because you like them. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that now. Oh, love hurts. It's hard for me to forgive because you ain't operating in love. You got that same heart. God need to give you a new heart. Just like we just read. The heart God give you, you want to know? Go to Ezekiel 11 and 19. Let's go to that. Let's go there because I almost got upset just then. Talking about love can get you killed. Your mouth will get you killed. What you talking about? Don't disrespect love like that because you don't understand what love is because you full of like. Talking about you love pizza. Have no idea. Just running your mouth, your lips get you killed. 11 and 19, Ezekiel, watch this. He says, I will give them integrity. I will give them integrity of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove their heart of stone from their bodies and give them a heart of flesh. So God got to do some operation. So operating got to go on now. <laughs> he got to remove the stone heart and replace it with a heart of flesh. <laughs> That's probably why you don't understand what love is because your heart's still stone. You haven't obeyed the commandments. You haven't put God first. You haven't done that. You cannot love God with all your heart if your heart is stoned, meaning divided. There's nothing your child can do to stop you from loving your child. He can come home or she can come home with all else. I bet you still love him. <laughs> it ain't nothing. I've seen parents love their kids through it all. Through it all. They still love them. Why? Because they're not operating off the way they feel. They, they mad that the child came in without else. They don't change the fact that, man, I love my son, my daughter. <laughs> yeah, y'all starting to get it. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. We will not follow his decrees with a divided heart that desire things of this world more than the things of God. That's why you don't love, you don't know what it is. You want to follow the desires of your own self. You want to follow the desires of your own self. You don't want to follow... The, the, the commands of what Jesus said. Loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Loving your neighbor as yourself. 
You don't want to do that because that's going to require for you to sacrifice. Give up you. You got to give up you. You got to. That's what love is. Treating that person who spat on you the same way you would want to be treated. Even if it's a direct insult or a vulgar or a slanderous movement toward you. <laughs> yeah, like, nah, I, don't, I guess I ain't gonna never love then. That's fine. You switch that up. You're gonna regret the fact, regret those words and thoughts that you just stated. He said, he give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. So just ask. Ask for a new heart. Ask for it. You know who asked for a new heart? You know who did that? King David. I'm gonna write his name right here. King David, he asked for a new heart. Ask for one. Get on your knees, throw your hands up, and ask God, the righteous Father, through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ask him for a new heart. Let me get that scripture. So you can stop saying, I don't know how to get it. Well, King David did. King David did. Psalms 51 and 10. He asked for a new heart. You don't ask for a new heart. You don't ask, you ain't never asked, never asked God, God, how do I love? Can you teach me how to love? I'm just tired of being so angry and so mean. I'm tired of always having some having something to say. When people say something to me, I'm always getting offended because you got a heart of stone. You ain't got a loving heart. Your heart is stone hard. 51 and 10. King David said, God, create a clean heart for me and renew a steadfast spirit within me. <laughs> you ain't asking nothing. You got to ask. God, get this. Give me a give me a new heart. So I can love. I need a new heart so I can love. You can't love with that old stone, rock hard heart you got now. That's why you're always offended. Someone can look at you crazy, you ready to fight. Someone cut you off in the street, you ready to fight. You hunk your horn and get mad when somebody getting your way on the lane. You, your heart is stone. Oh, I take her out of the bills in the house. Don't even get me started with that. Y'all, look, cause this, this is gonna go another way. <laughs> this is gonna go another way. You gotta start asking yourself these things. Ask yourself this. And be truthful when you do it. Am I really loving others? Now remember, loving others is loving them even if they offend you. Now, if you are doing that, you can't bring it back up. Well, remember when I did that? Remember when you did when, when you did this to me, but I ignored it and I did this for you? Nah, you can't do that. <laughs> because that ain't what love is. Love is when you just completely give yourself up for them, regardless of how they do to you. Do you do that? Let me help you out. When you do that, you are showing that you love God. Give, give up yourself for them. Love others. Like you say that right here. Love others. You are showing you love God when you do that. And you don't came across, oh, that, she's just so nice. You don't mind being around people like that. Now, I got something for you too. You Christian, you brothers, my brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, the one Lord, one faith, one baptism community, you know, us, right? If anyone says they love God, anyone, whom they have not seen ever. Right? But say they don't love their brother 
who they can see. <laughs> you a liar. Liar. You hypocrite. How you gonna say you love God who you ain't never seen, but you say you love your brother who you can see? You a liar. Let me say that again. First John 4 and 20. Let's go to it. I want to read it verbatim. First John 4 and 20. Uh, let's see. First John 4 and 20. Uh, let's see. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hate his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Ooh, man, you liar. Talking about you love God, but you want to give your, your, your brother, your mama, $15 so they get them something to eat. But you love God. Now, nah, liar. That's what the book say. You a liar. You don't love God. You don't love your brother nor your sister because who you can't see because you don't feel like it. They they um they stole from me. They took they took my stuff. They took my stuff. Liar. You don't love God. You ain't never seen God before. Dare your life, but you love him. But you don't love the, your brother and your sister who you can see every day. Liar. Oh, I can love them from a distance. Oh, I'm going to put that on there. There it is. Love from a distance. I can love them from a distance. I ain't got to be around them to love them. How? How can you love somebody from a distance when we know what love is? You got to love your neighbor. You got to love God with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your heart, and with all your strength. I like to call it the body. And you got to love your neighbor as yourself. How can you do that distantly? You liar. You don't love. And the, the moment somebody hurts your little old feelings, you tuck your tail and run. And then going to try to cloud and hide behind, I can love them from a distance. <laughs> oh, man. You hear yourself? You're so caught in your emotions. You're so caught in your feelings that you don't understand biblical love. What is biblical love? Sacrificial. You giving up you for another person. And the reason why you can do that, the reason why you can give up yourself for another person is because God did it first. Right here. He first loved us. How he first loved us? By giving us his son, Jesus Christ. He did it first. So don't tell me you can't do it when God did it first. Gave up his only son. Some of y'all wouldn't even do that. Y'all barely give up 10 to $15. So miss me. Oh, I can love from a distance. I can love from a distance. No, you can't. Can't love from no distance. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to use wisdom. <laughs> I'm going to use wisdom. Let me put that over here. I'm going to use wisdom. I'm not going to get God again with it. I'm going to use wisdom. Liar. This is what you are, a big liar. I told y'all. I told y'all what I was going to do with this. I told y'all. You start asking, your, asking yourself questions like, who has God put in my life for me to love? Look at your surroundings. Look at the people God has placed in your life. Go through your phone contacts. 
look at it. You don't remember no number. So just go through the contacts and see who has God really and truly put in your life for you to love. Everybody's, everybody's not going to be perfect. A lot, a lot of them going to hurt your feelings or get outside your love, scope, and support. A lot of them. It's your duty as a Christian to love that brother and love that sister. Biblically. It's not your duty to like them. It's your duty to love. Y'all got, here it is. Y'all got, that's 10, this one. Y'all got love right here. That's the middle. Love right here. And y'all got like right here. And then y'all got, this the top, trust right here. Look how backwards y'all are. Look how backwards y'all are. Y'all got love at the bottom. You got like before, uh, 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 love, uh, like above love and trust above all. Are you serious? You see that? You got trust, you got love in the middle. You got like above love and you got trust above love. Love at the bottom. You so far gone, love only exists. You said, man, love will get you killed. Really? Wow. Whoo, man. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you. You got to understand that your walk, your Christian walk, isn't about you. It might be some people that your God-loving spirit, which is given to you by him, needs to see that. So they can be transformed. Get that stone heart up out of them and replaced with a, with a new heart, right? And a new spirit. They need to see God's true love magnified and produced through you. They need, they need to see how when things don't go right, when you don't feel good, how you act, they need to know, they need to see the unfailing love, the unconditional agape love. Is that you? Do you, do you give that? Okay. Now, Landon, I don't really know what love is. Well, we just went over it right here. We just went over what love is. Right, but let me give you the breakdown of this. The breakdown. First Corinthians is one of the famous verses in the Bible. You should know this. I I, I ain't want to just go straight forward with it, but I'll go ahead and give it to you. I'm talking to everybody because you got people. Oh, I prophesy. I'm a pro I'm a I'm a prophet. I prophesy. Oh, I speak in tongues. You know I. You know, you got to speak in tongues. So since I speak in tongues, I know I got love. No. Because a lot of people that speak in tongues will claim they speak in tongues are evil. They don't love. They'll cut your tail out in a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to read. Here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Now watch this. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all the faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not love, I gain nothing. <laughs> you gain nothing. You, you prophesy. You prophesy. You speak in tongues. You, well, you, you think you, well, you say you speak in tongues. We'll get to that later. But yet, if you don't love, you are nothing. This is what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Oh, let me write it down. Let me write it down. Let me see. Let me, I need some room. I need some room. Oh, I'm gonna leave that all up there. Right here. Love is patient. 
right? Love is kind. I'm telling you what love is now. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. You can't be envious of nobody. Does not envy. It's not boastful, nor arrogant. Does not boast. Isn't arrogant. Excuse my hearing right now, because I, I, I do write. I don't, I don't write that good. <laughs> Where I'm at. I want to give you word for word. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Okay. So we're going to go not rude. Not self-seeking. There, there you go right there. The Bible clearly states love is not self-seeking. You're talking about, oh, well, Jesus told you to, to, uh, to love yourself. No, he didn't because that'd be a self-seeking attribute. It'll be a self-seeking attribute if you seek to love yourself. It clearly, it clearly states not self-seeking. So we'll, I will break that down another time. Let's see. It's not irritable. <laughs> I mean, you can't get mad so fast. You got patience. It's not irritable. Right? Where I'm at. And watch this. Y'all ain't gonna like this part. This your problem. This is why you can't forgive. This the main reason why you can't forgive. You want to blame it on everybody else but your own self. Here it is right here. You're going you, you to get mad at this part right here. And then watch this. Love keeps no record of wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It's not self-seeking. It isn't irritable. And it keeps no record of wrong. I, I just have a difficult time uh, forgiving people. Why is that? Because you have that stone heart. Your heart is stone. That's why. It ain't the person, it's you. You better get it to gavel. <laughs> you better get it to gavel. You gonna mess around and miss out on this love fest. Cause the love fest so, I hope this curriculum helped you guys out. The difference of what is biblical love in the Bible, what it truly means and what it isn't, okay? Tradition tells us that biblical love is, I mean, uh, traditional love tells us that this is what love is, and based off Google, it's an affection, a feeling of affection, and sex, and all that, right? But the Bible says something totally different. Biblical love is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's kind, patient, etc. Okay? So, thank you guys for joining. I'll let you see this on the board so you can get a screenshot of it. And enjoy your evening.